recently there has been a storm that has hit California. A powerful storm. I mean, I, I've never seen anything the likes since I lived there. I grew up in California. I lived there till about the age of 35. And I mean, I'm, I'm going to be 60 this year. So that's more than half of my life. I have never seen anything, anything like this that has recently hit California. And if you haven't been following the news, look it up. The storm that's recently hit, folks. It's been described in the news as a hurricane-type storm, and it certainly met those qualifications. A massive storm has been bringing with it hurricane-force winds and rain, and it has turned deadly in California. Parts of the state are seeing flash floods and landslides, with now a second round of severe weather in less than a week. Nearly 180,000 customers are without power, and people living along the coast are under evacuation orders. The daring and dramatic rescues unfolded all weekend across California and continued today. A devastating deluge triggering a flurry of emergency calls as the suddenly stranded were plucked from submerged cars, flooded roads, and homes that took on water. Statewide, as roads remain impassable, some are still under evacuation orders. It was like Mother Nature came alive and declared war on Sacramento. In Sacramento County, where there's been at least one death, authorities are bracing for more. I've worked for the Kasumnas Fire Department, or previously the Elk Grove Fire Department, for 21 years. This is the most significant flooding I've seen in this area in those 21 years. Overnight, a major storm barreling down in California. Winds gusting over 100 miles an hour in some areas. Look at this. The wind has knocked down the roof of this gas station. Waves of heavy rain pelting San Francisco or up to a foot is possible. Firefighters and police in that city rescuing a family after a tree fell on their vehicle. In Occidental, officials reporting an infant lost his life after a tree fell on a mobile home. This is probably up there with, with 19, some of the storms 23 years ago, with the amount of trees down. A lot of the same scenarios have happened this time that we had a long time ago. This satellite image showing the heavy storm as it entered the area, inundating the west coast with torrential rain. The storm so powerful, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration sending its hurricane hunter to better understand the severe weather. And throughout the state, authorities desperately urging residents to stay home. California inundated as catastrophic storms pummel the state. In the Sierra Nevada Mammoth Mountain, getting dumped on. Authorities partially shutting down Interstate 80 due to high winds and whiteout conditions. The death toll climbing to at least 17, with that number expected to grow. We've had less people die in the last two years of major wildfires in California that have died since New Year's Day related to this weather. As the state gets hit from the north to the south, rushing water turning roads to rivers. The Golden State has gotten between 400 to 600 percent above average rainfall totals. Some parts seeing more than 36 inches of rain since Christmas. That's put 90 percent of residents on flood watch. In Montecito, tractors working to clear the mud-covered roadways while residents wait under evacuation orders. Across the state, tens of thousands ordered to evacuate and hundreds of thousands more hunkering down, affected by power outages, flooding, lightning, and even hail in San Francisco. Forecasters now warn that storms will continue for at least another week and could bring up to 10 more inches of rain to Northern California in the coming days. In the past more misery swamping the Golden State as dangerous flooding from another Pineapple Express putting property and people in jeopardy. The storms have claimed at least 18 lives so far. In the Central Valley and along the entire coastline, massive landslides and fast-moving water destroying roadways, bridges and train tracks. San Francisco hit by thunderstorms and hail. The damage to statewide infrastructure could top a billion dollars, say experts. So what's been going around on the internet is a prophecy that was given by John Paul Jackson, I believe over a decade ago. Um, there is a, an earthquake that has been predicted to, to devastate uh, California, meaning uh, skyscrapers are going to fall. Um, uh, the shape of the United States will change after that earthquake, but that won't happen 
till after there's a storm. A major storm is going to come to California. Uh, it's either a hurricane of incredible force, or it is a storm of incredible force. But a, a great, a great hurricane or incredible force is going to come to California, and the earthquake that destroys it will not happen till after that takes place. So there's a, a way of saying, okay, I have time, but that doesn't mean there won't be an earthquake tomorrow of 7.5, you know, or or next week or two weeks from now of some some magnitude. But I'm talking the one that changes the shape of California, where everybody you don't want to live in California. Anywhere in California when that happens, or perhaps even on most of the most of the West Coast, where an inland ocean is is formed and and uh, uh, Baja becomes an island, and uh, the uh, the mouth of the inland ocean forms between San Diego and Los Angeles, that isn't going to happen before that that storm comes, and so uh, that that is a sign that God will give is giving to the people. Don't worry about that big one. Uh, because this, this sign will happen. People are coming up with dates on when this is supposed to happen. Again, to admonish people that are doing this, if you're going to take somebody's prophecy, build upon it. Say, God has shown you more about it. You might want to listen to everything else this, uh, this person you're taking the prophecy from and building upon. Listen to everything they say. It is apparent to me that these people are unaware of that John Paul Jackson said I wish I could find the video I cannot find it but I will never forget what he said because it mattered and it's this I want to come up with the exact words I don't want to quote him incorrectly but I believe it was more along the lines of the East Coast is going to go before the West you heard what I said correctly and what he said correctly in fact, I believe a quote would be more along the lines of, I would be looking for the East Coast quake to go before the West. That's almost an exact quote of what the man said. Now, I could have been delusional that day, may have been on something. <laughs> you know, I may not have heard it correctly. Maybe John Paul didn't even get it right. I would also say that if you're going to go there, if John Paul didn't get the fact that he believed he, that he told us to be looking for the East to go before the West, if he didn't get that right, then what do you put any stock in in the West Coast for? If he didn't get that right, don't, don't, don't listen to the, to, to the West Coast part of it. But if, if he did get the West Coast correct, then I would be listening to what he said and believed about the, the East Coast. Um, so that's my complaint. Now, it is not, I guess, it's not impossible between now and February 8th or whatever for the Madrid to go because that's what he was talking about. I know some of you haven't even heard some of this stuff before, that, that the, 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 the East Coast or the West Coast. In fact, when I first heard these prophecies, I they like, what in the world are you even talking about? But... When I heard, because there didn't seem to be any science behind it, and there is, I'll show you in a second. But back in 2017, when the only other storm that ever fit the build, I started doing a lot of research on it and John Paul's prophecy. But for some of you that aren't familiar, let me show you a little bit of what was happening in 2017 and the, the hurricane type storm that hit California. Good evening, I'm DeMarco Morgan. There's rain in the southeast tonight, but nothing like the deadly storms that blasted the Pacific Coast in the past 24 hours. Parts of Southern California were hit with record rainfall and winds gusting at hurricane force. At least two people are dead as the severe weather pushes across the desert southwest. Another wave of storms is expected to roll into the west late Sunday. Here's Carter Evans. The huge Pacific storm hit so fast and so hard, drivers were caught off guard as relentless torrents of rain turned roads into rivers in minutes. Dude, this is so gnarly. At one point, more than half a dozen major freeways and highways were closed. Our camera crew captured the moment a flash flood overwhelmed a neighborhood north of Los Angeles. You can do it. In less than a minute, there were rapids on the roadway as we made our escape. More than eight inches of rain fell in some parts of Southern California. That is crazy. A month's worth in one day. Swift water teams rescued several people who were trapped by the flooding LA River. When started rising, it came in like half an hour later, it was, it was time to 
We got out, yeah. This man was saved from the top of his partially submerged car, but rescuers found a body underwater in the vehicle behind his, one of at least two deaths linked to the store. Wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour blew down hundreds of trees and power lines, leaving more than 100,000 people in the dark. The storm also caused the cancellation of hundreds of flights. How could California, or much of it, or even to, to, to the degree that John Paul said, is going to go into the ocean? The, the mouth of the inland ocean is going to go between San Diego and L.A.? In fact, if you, if you follow the map that that I'm about to show you on the science behind what's been going on in California. I'm going to show you a documentary, a clip of when I was doing research on how could this happen in the Central Valley, it's all been sinking. These fields in California's Central Valley have been sinking by more than one foot per year. That means that about five years ago, these fields would have been above my head. No one knows exactly how much water is being pumped, but hydrologist Michelle Sneed is alarmed by how quickly the ground is sinking. I've been studying land subsidence uh, throughout the West for 20 years, and I've never measured rates like this before. Over the past two decades, the ground in one area has sunk from Sneed's head to her feet. According to NASA, some parts of the Central Valley are now sinking more than two inches a month. We saw that the area being affected by subsidence was enormous, stretching all the way from I-5 to 99, about 1,200 square miles were being affected by subsidence. That's an area the size of Rhode Island, and it has sunk permanently. How do you stop those areas from sinking? Well, the scientific solution is really easy. Uh, you stop lowering groundwater levels. Uh, putting that into practice is a whole other ball of wax. Farmers would have to cut back on drilling for water. The center of it is down south of here. but Sneed's colleague, you know, Claudia Font, here, took me to see some of the damages subsidence has already yeah. caused. I mean, what do we got going on here? And I mean, it's really buckling. Yeah, and a few years ago when I was here, it wasn't nearly this bent, so it's showing evidence of continuing to warp even more. These canals deliver water to farms and cities throughout Southern California, including Los Angeles. And this isn't the only one I see. I mean, I see it here, mm -hmm. I see it right down there, and I see a third one. Yeah, and there's another one up that direction as well. So this can be happening to the bridges, to the roadways, to the railroads. Correct. In fact, there's a bridge right down the road from here that the water level is now coming up over the base of the road because that area has sunk. When I went to see the bridge, the flood risk was clear. The water level has risen up so high now that it would go right over the surface of the road if they hadn't built these retaining walls to keep it back. Nearly half the nation's fruits, vegetables, and nuts are produced in California. To find out what the state is doing to protect its vital farmland, I met with Janine Jones of the Governor's Drought Task Force. Subsidence is not regulated historically under California law. No one is responsible for it. But certainly the state doesn't even know how big the subsidence problem is. We're not even monitoring all of the subsidence? There has, no, there has not been funding or programs because there has been no statutory responsibility or requirement to do so. Last year, California lawmakers passed legislation to manage groundwater, but it won't require regulators to limit pumping for another 25 years. Until then, the sinking will likely continue. For some farmers, drilling for water has provided a lifeline during the drought. But the long-term consequences of that drilling are becoming clearer. If we do have a wet year, As large swaths of the state continue to sink, the risk of flooding increases. That was 2017, folks, back then. And it has continued to sink. California has continued to sink since. Now, some of you think, OK, well, that's that's great. And that's fine and dandy. But what's that got to do with the storm? Do you know, as I kept doing my research, that there are reports? This is science, folks, even news reports on how this could follow a flood. Southern California has been soaked by a lot of heavy rain lately, but now some scientists wonder if all that rain could stress our earthquake faults and trigger a devastating quake. A research shows there may be a link between rain and earthquakes. Mm. It's an old theory scientists have been pondering for decades. 
Can heavy rainfall trigger earthquakes? Professor Gillian Folger, a respected geophysicist at Durham University in England, has recently published an article titled, California's Rain May Shed New Light on Questions About What Causes Earthquakes. Her team points to several events throughout history where heavy rains were followed by earthquake swarms. It happened in Mount Hochstaufen in Germany in 2002 and in the Riemenstalden area of Switzerland in 2005. Folger says if rain percolates down far enough into a fault, the fault may become unclamped. The two sides are then free to slip past one another, causing an earthquake. Folger also points to earthquakes believed to be triggered by man-made reservoirs. After the 32-mile-long Koina Reservoir was built in India in the 1960s, scientists believe the weight of all that water triggered a 6.3 earthquake that killed more than 180 people. In fact, Oroville Dam had a 5.8 earthquake seven years after it was built, but scientists are still debating about what caused it. It all begs the question, with Oroville and Anderson reservoirs at full capacity, should we be worried about the weight of all that water? And here's the crazy thing. The last decade, California's been going through a drought. A drought, folks. And what happens, and most of you, you get it, what creates an earthquake is the shifting of the plates beneath the Earth's surface. And what happens normally is they're, they're somewhat moist. I need you to hear me, folks. This doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. This is just what I'm showing you what, what's been happening. The, the Earth's been sinking, the water's been going, and it's been compacting itself. Because of these droughts, there's no water in California or hasn't been. And so you got it compacting. What normally would be moving around is just crusting itself and compacting itself together, and it's not going to move, and it's not been moving, because it's normally moist down there, right? And so it takes more force to where it finally gives, but you get it so dry, folks, and you get it so compacted, and then you want to dump a bunch of water on it. Now, according to my research, this can take up to up to six, six months to a year. Now, some people are saying it could take a and reports show it can be a couple weeks. Probably why people are saying it's going to be in February. You better have the East Coast before you get the West. You want the East Coast. In any case, so you jump all this water on there and finally it starts moistening up, moistening up, moistening, and finally all that pressure that had been building up finally goes boom. I'm not trying to scare anybody, people, but I'm telling you that. That appears to be exactly what California is going to experience, and not just California, the whole West Coast, like John Paul said. There's science behind this, and I don't think he got it. In fact, I'll, I'll, I bet almost anything, he didn't get the science. That's not how this came to him. So you that are saying that it's going to happen, this, well, if it's going to happen in February, we better have the East Coast go first. But all this moisture is desperately needed to fight the drought. The last few years has been dry and not a whole lot going on. And, and now um, with this type of rainstorm and such, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Look for more to come. Till next time, take care and God bless.